Morning, everybody. Uh, are you ready for Taco Tuesday or Taco Friday because it's Friday or whatever? Taco whatever day it is while you're watching. It's Taco Day because this is a 2018 Toyota Tacoma. Um, the Toyota community loves to shorten the name of these trucks and give them a nickname like Toy or Yoda or Taco or Coma. I don't think they use that last one. Anyway, I'm excited because I fell in love with the Toyota pickup truck or Hilux as it was called everywhere else. Uh, when I saw um, Back to the Future, saw that truck, fell in love with it. I still love the shape of the Hilux in the pickup truck. I think it was a, gr I think it's a great shape it's a truck. It's the right size, um, and we all know they've had legendary status because of their reliability. They built the Hilux till '95, and then they switched to the to the Tacoma, uh, hoping to make it a little more comfortable on the road, a, a little bit more of a usable for everyone kind of vehicle whereas the the Hilux was very hardcore and a little stiff back at the time or at the time uh, so this is the third gen the third gen came out in 2015 uh, this is a 2018 changes since it came out well they got rid of some functionality on the wheel you used to be able to control the song list and contacts um, in the center screen using a steering wheel button you can't anymore and they also added some driver aids they added uh, like a cross traffic alert blind spot monitoring and a lane keep assist which does like a very faint but beep it's like excuse me uh, when, you, when you have a minute it's a little too quiet it needs to like either you know move the wheel and be noisy or just not be there um, so that's what they've changed and as you can see unfortunately we are in uh, the suburbs of Seattle not off-roading not in a mud pit not on a rock trail and that's because the nearest off-road park is several hours away and I have to fly out and we tried to off-road it yesterday. And I say we because Sam Smith of Road and Track uh, lives up here and he's like, oh, I'm gonna take you to Mount Rainier. And we're gonna go drive the backcountry discovery route, logging roads, and it'll be snowy and awesome and great. And I was like, let's do it. And we went to the first road. And as you'll see from the photo, it was snowed in. 20 feet, 15 feet of snow thing. We went to three different trails hoping to go snow off-roading and get some cool footage for you guys and, and really test out the capabilities of this truck. And it had snowed so much in the last few days that um, everything was basically blocked. So we drove uh, tarmac the whole way and um, that sucks. But what I have learned on this drive and I started in, started in LA and I drove all the way up to Seattle is that trucks do a lot more than off-roading, as you guys know. Um, I'm also not very good at rock crawling and I don't want to go off-roading by myself. So what I'm going to do is a road review and we're going to talk about what is important to you when you're buying a truck. Um, what's important is for, in terms of comfort, utility, um, towing ability. All those things are very important to look at right now because there used to only be one game in the small mid-sized truck town and that was the Toyota from 2002-ish to uh, maybe two years ago. Well, 2014, I think, the Colorado came out. Basically, for 10 to 15 years, no one else was making a truck this size other than Toyota. So they were the only game in town. And now the Ranger's back and very comfortable, which we will talk about. And the Colorado and the Canyon are out. And they're all priced within a thousand bucks of each other when you spec them out uh, in similar ways. And they have very little differences in terms of dimensions and uh, cabin room. But what I have noticed is there are big differences in comfort, quiet, suspension setup um, and the noise vibration and harshness from the engine and the power plants so that's what we're going to talk about on the road so uh, you're also going to notice that the drive-bys were shot at Mount Rainier on tarmac and uh, the and not around here so the drive-bys are prettier but we're taking yesterday I apologize anyway before we get on the road the only thing I want to talk about before we start moving is seating position because it has been the most asked about and talked about topic on Twitter and Instagram for this truck. Uh, you sit like you're in a car, the floor is very high, and the seat bottom is only about that high off the floor of the truck. And in other SUVs and things, you'll notice your legs drop down a lot more. So when I first got in this thing, knowing I had a thousand miles to go in it, I was a little worried. I thought it felt weird. Jump ahead a week, uh, it's actually been fine in terms of seat and leg comfort. The, the seat bottom is too short and doesn't give enough thigh support, but it never caused numbness. Uh, my knees actually felt very good with this position like you'd expect in a car. I added a lumbar pillow because I have a bad uh, back with a, a bulging disc, but I think anyone else would be totally fine with it. But what, what, nobody is, what, what I'm not fine with is the telescoping wheel, which 
moves that much. Uh, it's, it is very, it is completely insufficient for how far back you have to sit so that your knees don't touch the dashboard. My knee right now is two inches from the dashboard of this truck. And I wish the wheel came back to here so I could have the correct angle for my arm. So you kind of have to choose between either sitting really upright and being close to the wheel and having your knees still close to the wheel or leaning really far back and being stretched out the whole time. And I, you know, the other trucks I've driven, which are the Canyon and the Ranger, you didn't have to make that choice. So that is a bit of a snafu. Um, so we're gonna get on the road and we're gonna talk about what the pickup truck is for what this one is good at and bad at, and uh, if you're shopping for one, what you need to think about. All right, so let's get through the basic specs of this truck. It's uh, a 3.5 liter V6. The price of the Tacoma off-road quad cab starts at about $36,000. And this has about $3,000 worth of options added to it, um, most of which I could do without. For There's like $2,500 package, which gets you leather, dual zone climate control, the moonroof, which I've never used because my parents taught me they were evil. That's not true, that's just a stupid joke. Um, and the automatic headlights and probably a couple other things I'm forgetting. But it's basically niceties, and it's niceties you don't need. I mean, if you're a, Toyota Tacoma off-road buyer, you can probably turn on your own high beam headlights. Like, you know, you're filling your hydro flask with cement and doing curls during stoplights. Like, you're, you're the person who's overhead pressing their kayak while they walk up the trail, right? Aren't you? Aren't you? Said the guy wearing North Face, making fun of people who wear North Face. So, I could do without those things. The other option was um, the driving assist package, like cross traffic alert and uh, parking assist. I don't really need that. You know, everything comes with a backup camera now. I find that that's good enough for parking, but if you want it, great. So 36,000 to $40,000, depending. Um, the other, the competition in this, which is the Ranger uh, XLR FX4 uh, is priced very, very close. And so is the Colorado um, ZR1. The Canyon is too expensive. I think it's overpriced. It, it rides really nice, but that's an overpriced pickup truck. But the ones that are spec like this, they all cost about the same. So what you're gonna be looking at are things like comfort, tow, uh, towing capacity, and payload. This thing, it, when you floor it, it goes. It's like 265 foot-pounds of torque, 280 horsepower. All of that is, is pretty strong. What it's not good at is cruising on the highway. It doesn't sound or feel like it likes to be cruising above 50 miles an hour. Um, I think the gearing in fifth and sixth are too tall, and that makes the engine have to kick down to go up even very small hills when it's already at speed. And then when it kicks down to fourth, it's not a good sound. I mean, it. Big displacement V6s are inherently unbalanced engines, so you're always gonna have more vibration than most other power plants. And yeah, the, the, it, it comes through in this. Uh, the tires also make a lot of noise. I don't know if it's the shape of the car. The other trucks I've driven were on all seasons. This has Goodyear Wrangler Adventure All Terrains. So if you put KO2s on it, it would probably help the road noise a lot. But I found it to be pretty distracting and Although the phone calls and Bluetooth, it's a very good and clear system, I thought the people on the other end of the line were hearing the road noise. They weren't, but I was hearing it. So you turn the stereo up, which you get upgraded if you get the premium one, um, and it drowns everything out and bumps very loud. The dash layout is all pretty good. The things are categorized, like there's, you know, there's lighting is over here with the bed lighting, um, bed power outlet switch, automatic high beams, that's over on this side. Down here is HVAC is normal, and then you have like your, your miscellaneous box. You've got the USB ports, um, some other stuff. So it's, it's laid out fine. The buttons are big and chunky. You could use them with gloves on, which is important. It, I think it's important in a utility vehicle. Um, you can see everything clearly, day or night. All of that is very good. Whereas when I was in the, uh, the Wrangler and the Canyon, the buttons are much smaller 
they're, they'd be a little harder to use with big chunky gloves on. And I found myself using the touchscreen to control those systems a lot more. Uh, this car I used uh, all the controls down here. So that's kind of a personal thing. Do you want to use hard buttons uh, and knobs for stuff or do you want to use the touchscreen, which you do a lot more in the Ranger? Storage is good. It's got a lot of it. Uh, I, like, I like the materials on the doors. They're very comfortable. I wish this armrest slid forward because of where the seat has to be for me. And uh, I wish the dash was flatter. And what I mean is if you look at Look at a picture of a 2015 Jeep Wrangler dash and then look at a 2018. Because something they focused on is shrinking all of those electronics in the packaging, and it, which gives you more room in the cabin. And in this case, the, it, because of where you have to sit, my knee is way too close to this dashboard. And it actually tapped it a few times when I had to hit the brakes. So maybe if they were able to shrink this and push it back a bit, that would help. Or easier, just build a, a wheel that telescopes more than two inches. I don't know why they do that. The steering rack is quick, it's heavy, it's electronic, it feels kind of like a sports car doing an impression of steering feel. So I think it would be a really good rack if you were you know, driving quickly in the dirt, in the desert, stuff like that. Um, it, it, it's a good speed for that. It's a little aggressive for highway driving. I preferred some of the other trucks, but again, it's, that's a subjective thing. You know, Do whatever you want to do, get what you want to get. I did encounter some pretty good snow in Eugene, Oregon. Four wheel drive took care of it immediately, no problem. It shifted into high smoothly, it shifted in back into two wheel drive smoothly. The tires, although they're loud, did a very good job on icy roads. I never felt any kind of slip or anything like that. You know, and so what I liked about this truck, because the other car I was offered was a, a Lexus UX, and it would have been more comfortable on the highway, but it would have been far worse when I got to uh, the deeper snow. What we like about trucks is that they're, they feel impervious. You know, we feel invincible and we can handle anything. And a lot of people buy a truck because they'll use it once or twice a year for that kind of thing. Or, well, what if there's inclement weather? Okay, I mean, most of us don't need them that much. It, it's, like, uh, it's like buying prepper food and eating it every day because you're like, well, one day we might need this. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build a bunker in the forest and we're gonna live there. Because one day it might snow a lot and I might need to still drive to the grocery store and I need this truck. And that's what brings me to the topic, which is, what are you gonna use a truck for? Because for a long time, the only midsize, they call this midsize, midsize truck available was a Tacoma. But now you've got the Ranger, the Canyon, and the Colorado. And I think they feel like very different vehicles. This thing, it is very stiffly sprung. Uh, it's a little noisy, as you can probably hear. But it's super reliable, right? This is the, it's, it's like a hammer. I mean, it's never gonna break. It's made by Toyota. Their reputation's great, the resale's great. You can own it out of warranty and never have to worry about it. But you're making compromises. You're making uh, a seating compromise. You're making a noise compromise. The engine is far louder than like the new 2.3 liter EcoBoost that comes in the Ranger. Now I've driven the Ranger uh, on light dirt and on the highway and it's way quieter. The engine feels less strained going up and down hills on the highway because it has a 10 speed. Um, it's an inline four turbo, so it's better balanced. It's got more torque, it tows more, it can carry more in the bed, but it's, and yet it's softer sprung, which is amazing. Um, the Colorado, I, I have never driven one. I've driven the Canyon, which was too expensive, I think, for what it is. Uh, also, quieter on the highway, probably due mostly to the tires, but softer sprung, more compliant suspension. Steering was very good. I didn't think the dash layout was as, like, uh, I don't know, it looked more like a car with smaller buttons and those kinds of things. It was a little harder to find your way around. But what are you going to do with a truck? Are you going to tow with it? Are you going to commute in it and off-road a little bit? Do you, do you really just need a vehicle that can carry toys in the back, work stuff, and maybe tow a boat or a track car, but you're not like an off-road rock crawling person? Like those are the things you need to ask because now you've got three very different flavors of vehicle. All capable, um, they all hold about, they all, they're about the same size down to the, almost a few inches. They're about the same price, but they're aimed at very different audiences, I feel like. Or not, sorry, they're not aimed at different audiences. They have different layers of spice on them. Think about that. You know, if you're shopping for a truck, really take a look at what you want and what you're gonna do with it. Test drive them, 
see how they fit you physically as a person, like a jacket. And uh, you know, if you need to tow more, the other truck, the other two trucks tow a thousand pounds more than this and carry more in the bed. But if you are gonna go pre-run Baja by yourself, you probably want to go with Tacoma. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that was informative. I'm sorry that the terrain is traffic, frankly. And I hope you learned something. And uh, yeah, have a great day. All right.